Captain's Log Supplemental. Fascinating. Aye, sir. Live long and prosper. But it's a mystery. I don't like mysteries. Give me a bellyache and I got a beauty right now. Four phases locked and ready to fire, sir. In the hands of an adolescent. I'm a doctor, not a mechanic. Welcome to the Three Doinks. <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, is, yeah, I, I'm knocking shit over today. This morning, I nicked the top of my ear somehow when I was shaving. It took me 20 minutes to stop the bleeding before I went into work. Jesus. Yeah, I like literally like filleted like the top <laughs> tip of my ear. Jesus. I, I don't know how, but... So. I stabbed myself with a screwdriver trying to buy it. <laughs> trying to, <laughs> to buy, buy it. it. <laughs> Hope you didn't buy that one then. I did because I needed to get my gas cap <laughs> open so I could put gas in the fucking car. So you were just going to pry the motherfucker off? <laughs> yeah. That's where I'm at with that thing. Do you have like a key thing or something for the gas cap or just, well, was, yeah, just it stuck? Has, it has a lever, but when they fixed it, they sh- sh- crammed it in there. Oh. And so the lever doesn't work, and it was so crammed in there, I have to use a screwdriver. But I took the screwdriver out when I cleaned my car out, so then I had to go buy a fucking screwdriver oh, no. so I could put gas in the car because I had to keep it for several more days. It was a whole fiasco. Wow. In that snowstorm. It was like poking oh, me geez. in the face. It was, it was, I was not a happy camper. <laughs> and on that note, folks, <laughs> welcome to the very first episode of what we are calling Trekking Poetic. Uh, yeah, the newest the newest feature is going to be a very long ongoing feature. The rest of I our foresee lives. many, yeah, <laughs> literally <laughs> for the rest <laughs> of our lives. Yeah, on here on Geeking Poetic Podcast, which of course you know you're watching. I would assume uh, I shouldn't have to tell you, but in case I do have to tell you, in case it's the first time you're ever watching us, uh, I am Larry Roberts. Across from me is Vito Marchese. And then right here, crammed in the middle, banging into <laughs> shit, <laughs> we have... Megan Guess. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is something that we've been trying to get around to, gosh, ever since we started this. Yeah. Literally for the past year. Yeah. We've yeah, been trying we... to get this off the ground. Well, we had to find the perfect outlet to talk about Trek. Yeah, it because... Be just right. Yeah. <laughs> to do it justice. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know if we're still going to do it justice, but... <laughs> this, is, this is what we came up with, so this is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, so as we said before, for those that maybe don't know, uh, Star Trek is kind of like the common thread amongst the three of us. Uh, this is the thing that we all almost about equally love and appreciate and stuff, although we have our favorites and we, we debate That's them. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Voyager. Ugh. Uh huh. Don't even get me started. I... So good. Oh. <laughs> yeah. See. So, but we're that's that's <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Like seven we'll years see. from now, yes. you know, I think we'll 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 finally tackle that. When we're sixty, we'll we'll tackle that one. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe by that point, you'll like it better. <laughs> we'll see. <clears throat> Maybe you'll relate to Jane way better by then. I understand why she cries all the fucking time. It's mm-hmm. not all the time. It's every episode. <clears throat> no, well, not every episode. I haven't gotten to the one then. That's not. <laughs> Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. In any case, so what we ended up deciding, uh, we we we'd put off doing Star Trek for the longest time just because it was hard to figure out what we wanted to do. Right? I mean, we had so many different theories. We thought we were just going to do like a regular podcast, and we would just occasionally do podcasts. Which I mean, we probably will still do podcasts yeah. about it and everything. But I mean, we knew we wanted to cover as much of it as possible. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't figure out exactly how we wanted to do that. And what we came up with is that we are going to literally go through (laughs) everything, um, more or less. Episode by episode. Starting with the very, very first Trek ever, which was what we're going to talk about in this episode, which was the first pilot, which was The Cage. Mm Mm-hmm. So we're going to take it from there, and then in the next next episode, we're going to do... And also, we should say, because I know there's some, you know, Trek nerds that are going <laughs> to 
say, you're not doing it in the right order. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do it according to the way it was broadcast. Right. Or basically the way they're showing it on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because the other way just gets way too confusing, man. It's Right. Because, uh, you know, although we'll get into it, I, I hate the actual broadcast order. I think it, yeah. it's screwy. It's a screwy. terrible order. Yeah. You know, and the cast hated it, too. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they they were not happy for obvious reasons, because there's for, for one thing, there's all sorts of inconsistencies, mm -hmm. because starting with the starting with the man trap, which was supposed to be like the fourth or yeah, it's fifth, be way down several episodes, at least maybe even more than that. It might have been six or seven, several episodes into it. Um, having that air first, the problem was, is there were characters and story arcs and different things that had been introduced up to that point mm -hmm. that then to go back and later show what was supposed to be the first broadcast episode, which was where, where no man has gone before. I mean, like Uhura and I think McCoy, McCoy. and them, they're not even in that episode. <laughs> they weren't even there yet. <laughs> so to, and even like when you look at the costumes and stuff like that, the uniforms, like they look way more primitive in that, that first one compared to so when you when you try to for me when you try to watch it in this order that they have it the broadcast order the order it's on netflix is fucking aggravating <laughs> it's really aggravating plus when um when they put out all the trek original series on vhs and betamax back in the late 80s early 90s well i had the betamax i'm sorry <laughs> You're Mr. Betamax, dude. I think every episode we talk about Betamax. Because Beta ruled, man. <laughs> I don't care what any of you say. Beta was awesome. I still have Betamax tapes, and they look and sound good. My VHS tapes are literally deteriorating. Yeah, they really terrible. are. Terrible. They're. I mean, they're literally physically deteriorating. I've I've pulled out VHS tapes where the tape inside has like melted. Wow. I'm like, holy shit. Like, I didn't even know it could do that. Yeah. But I've got beta tapes from like 1979 that are like still going, man. They still, <laughs> you know. But in any case, uh, when they first came out with all of those uh, to buy or rent or whatever, um, they had them in the proper order. They actually had it where like the first tape was where no man goes before and the second tape was the Corbamite maneuver and so on. Mm -hmm. So... That's how for years I watched it. Mm -hmm. That so I'm so used to that that now when I had to start watching these again, you know, in order because I mean I've watched them over the years on TV and on Netflix right. and stuff, but I've always jumped around. I never sat down and watched it in order. Right. But because we're doing this now, I'm watching them in order, and it's pissing me off because <laughs> it's just wrong. It's just wrong. <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, we're, we're, so we're going to be doing the, it'll be easier for people if they want to follow at home or whatever. We're doing it the, what I'm calling the current, uh, order, you know, continuity. Mm -hmm. So. And we should say there's definitely, obviously going to be spoilers. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there's no way but to just do so this. You know. There's no way to do this without it. You know I mean? <laughs> And the show is what fifty ish years old now. In the sixties, yeah, right. mid sixties, mid sixties. Yeah, it, yeah. The show came out. Well, it premiered in sixty six. Yeah, yeah. The pilot was done in sixty five, sixty four. Yeah, sixty. Uh, yeah. It was completed in sixty five. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it. Yeah, it was started in sixty four or whatever. But yeah, so we're going to go through. All, well, actually, it'll be 80 episodes counting the pilot. We're going to go through all 80 episodes of the original series. Then we will do Next Generation, which I know yep, is hell yeah. what they're really waiting for. I love Next Gen, too, but, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an original series guy. You know, <laughs> that's what I grew up with. But before people are like, well, what about the movies? Well, what about the animated series? We're going to talk about all that, We're too. We're going to get it all. We're going to we're gonna get it, get to that too. But I think that movies and animated, like animated series might even be something we just do one long episode about. Cause hopefully, <laughs> cause I don't want to <laughs> sit through all that shit. Have you ever watched it? I've seen 
parts of them and they're really yeah. good. I, I think the animated series is actually really good, but it's it's just funny because in a lot of ways, it's even more cerebral than the TV show was the the original series was. And I'm like, why the who thought like, let's market this to kids on right. Saturday mornings. It's like even when I was watching it recently, I was like, what? And I was like <laughs> trying to wrap my head around a few things. And some of it was just creepy and weird. It's. It's cool, man. I mean, like now as an adult, I'm like, this show is really cool. But like, the hell were they smoking? Well, it was the <laughs> early 70s. Yeah. So I think I already know that answer. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, so you guys aren't really, before we start to talk about the cage, you guys aren't, well, you like original series. I do. I like the original series. Yeah. I'm all next gen, but I like the original series as well. And you're just sort of okay with it. After watching these, I'm like, oh, wow. I don't think I can watch these again if I wanted to. <laughs> well, like I was saying before we started rolling, I think these first few episodes are are real duties. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, well, like once we, when we'll, in a little while later, we'll be talking about episodes like Charlie X. Oof. Man. Oof. <laughs> Yeah, there's some real doozies and there there you know there's a lot of unintentional humor in these which is Oh yeah. <laughs> which is which is enjoyable in and of itself though. You that know. was my favorite parts of the of the episodes to be honest with. It was the uh, the stuff that you Yeah, I just literally laughed out loud at a couple spots and I was sitting by myself on the couch. So that says something bad. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, you know, when you consider what they were dealing with, and, I mean, they didn't have much of a template to follow. <clears throat> because, I mean, all all other sci-fi stuff up to that point, with the exception of Outer Limits. Because Outer Limits was a big inspiration for this series. Right. And he, actually, so I think they took some of the cat or the crew from the Outer Limits to this. Uh, first season at least i believe yeah they did and they also uh they uh what was in the notes here it says that they hired uh alumni from outer limits like robert justman and watching <laughs> watching <Wa -chang>, wa <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna make your show badass son watching <laughs> everybody's be watching yeah <laughs> yeah he needs to be watching this show um Everybody's like, God, that's so <laughs> wrong. I don't. Anyway, the po yeah, the point is, is the guys like them, Chang and Justman, they they had um, they had some serious cred coming from what is probably one of the only respectable mm. sci-fi shows out at that time. You know, Outer Limits, of course, Twilight Zone as well, and stuff. Yeah, but um, which of course, you know, Twilight Zone, Captain Kirk. You know, Shatner right. in one of the most famous uh, Twilight Zone episodes of all time. You didn't know that? I don't know. Oh. That. Nightmare yeah. 20,000 feet? Yeah. The the one about him being up on the plane with the gremlin attacking the plane. You don't know that story? No. Oh. Have you seen the Twilight Zone movie from the 80s? No. Oh, okay. boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to do a Twilight Zone episode eventually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would yeah. love that. Oh, yeah. man. Twilight I'm missing Zone. missing out on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Twilight Zone is great. Yeah, there's some really good episodes. There's some really bad episodes, but yeah, there's some really good episodes. That's there. true of almost all of them. <laughs> yeah, all every of good them. show has that. Yeah, it's true. Except Outer Limits, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd know that if you ever, uh, you know, get rolling with your uh, with your little project, Vito. Dude, I know. And I, it's just time consuming, but it is coming and soon. Ooh, that's promising. <laughs> At least the intro's already done, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> baby steps yeah <laughs> yeah but anyway uh yeah so the you know everything from getting people from uh from outer limits to work on it uh i think they also uh they also borrowed like creatures yeah, and they would and use props props and stuff, and stuff for the cage like the telosian head wasn't it that oh yes yeah it is that is exactly from outer mm -hmm. limits hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just, I knew they did. I knew some of the other. I didn't even think about that. That's so obvious. That's funny. Schooled me. 
Yes. Well, you and I haven't even seen Outer Limits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to. I do. Voiv- you know? Voivod even did a whole concept album about Outer Limits. Oh, did they? Did you know that? No. Oh, I'll have really? to. Really? I'll have to show that to you man it's it's pretty good um in the mid 90s okay anyway so yeah so they didn't have a whole lot to go by other than that you know he was drawing inspiration from that uh gene roddenberry was sick and tired of the way i understand he was sick and tired of writing just banal television scripts Mm -hmm. he was doing the same thing all the time he had been writing for wagon train Mm -hmm. And decided he wanted to take that and basically put that in outer space, right? Yeah, like a space cowboy. Yeah. Wagon train to the stars (laughs) kind of thing. (laughs) But also he wanted to throw a lot of more uh, progressive social commentary and thought into stuff. And anytime he tried to put that into scripts for these shows, they would always shoot that down because... People were douchebags back then, and <laughs> still are. But yeah. well, yeah, they definitely still are. But even more so, they could get away with being more outright douchebags back then. Right. So he came up with the concept of putting it in the future, right? Right. I, mm-hmm. And made it a little bit more um, uh, roundabout kind of way to go. Yeah, not as obvious, not as flat out in your face. Yeah, if people wanted, to, you know, if these cigar chomping you know mm. white anglo-saxon dudes you know sitting in their offices in hollywood saying we can't have a black woman blah 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 doing this and everything and he go well but this is the 23rd 24th century mm-hmm. who knows it can happen then it's so don't worry about it oh okay well you know in that case well you but, put it that way yeah yeah like it, you got a point there yeah it's not real world stuff you know yeah. well it speaks volumes to me that he fought so hard to keep number one as the woman. Right. And he lost that battle, too. But he was able to keep the Satan-looking alien <laughs> and not the woman. That's, that speaks volumes. Right. Yeah, <laughs> well. that time period. Right. Because two, two, the, the, two of the characters introduced mm-hmm. in the pilot were, as you said, Mr. Spock, mm-hmm. who wasn't quite. As you, he it's, wasn't quite Mr. Spock yet. I get such a big kick out of watching it and seeing the way Nimoy acts in that episode and stuff, you know, when he's just so, so not the usual. The captain. Yeah. He's he's like, the women. (laughs) (laughs) He's getting all worked up about shit, you know, and he's, and everything. It's great. You know, it's, it's, it's campy and fun, Mm -hmm. but so there was, his, he was way more. Yeah. Well, he was way more kind of, elfish like satanic elfish yeah. looking kind of dude in that you yeah. know which was the idea and then there was Majel Barrett's character which was number one mm-hmm. where she was kind of like the, the captain's right hand person you know and uh yeah I you know the the network had a problem with both of those characters they didn't like Spock because they said he was too satanic which is even more funny given what they wanted to do with Spock. Right? They wanted to make him red. Really? Like red paint his the, skin red? Yeah. Yeah, he was supposed to be red. Wow. With the, like a black bald cap or something? They were going to give him a tail. Oh, what? and a tail? That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's some jag off shit. Isn't Jesus, it? Yeah. man. So thank goodness. Yeah. Black and white screens took that away. <laughs> right. Well, because what happened was they, they realized when they looked at it on black and white screens, he just looked he just looked black. <laughs> Can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, apparently yeah, not. Yeah, you know, but but still, I mean, it just the point is, yeah, and well, and to Roddenberry's credit, he didn't want that. He yeah. didn't want that misrepresentation, right? You know, and uh, so so they nixed that and just gave him that kind of slight yellowish Yellow-y. tint, yeah. you know, that he had and everything. Um. But still, they didn't like that, and they had a problem with him, and they had a problem with number one because she was a female in charge. I thought she was great, man. I, she is Absolutely. great. She is one of well, you know. Again, well, we'll get into this in a minute. But the point See, I was, is, I was like, man, they should have kept her for the rest of the season or whatever. That would have been awesome. But there's a lot of things about the cage that I personally 
would have kept, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but the point is, is anyway, at the end of the day, the, uh, execs were like, no, you got to change some stuff. And one of the things it came down to, you know, Spock or number one, and they, they wanted to get rid of number one, you know, they let him keep Spock. You could keep the satanic weird guy, but the woman in charge, well, oh, no. <laughs> What are we trying to do here? <laughs> You're ruining You're doing, everything. Destroy the fabric of America. <laughs> yeah, Roddenberry. <laughs> you know. But yeah. he was sneaky because then he put in a black woman, it's an officer, and she's on the bridge. Mm -hmm. He he went for the trifecta. Yeah, like, All yeah, right, yeah. Get rid of number one. I'm still putting her up there. Which is even it's better. Just extra important. Yeah, you know? extra because as great as Majel Barrett was, and as much as I liked that character, um. You know, Uhura was infinitely more important in the grand scheme yeah, of yeah. all sorts of things. So, cool with that. It would have been nice to have both of them. Yeah. Well. I know. It was asking too much for 1966. But... Hey, but let's put it this way. We got Yeoman Janice. And I'll tell you what, guys. It was a good good choice on their part, yeah. I believe. She... Even with that fucking basket weave beehive. <laughs> but... It... Hey, I'll let I it slide. I'll let it totally slide, Janice. Totally seeing if I can find a wig, <laughs> dude. Going online. Yeah, uh, what was her? What was the actress's name? Uh, Grace Lee Whitney. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Yeah, she she was awesome. Yeah, yeah. She's a looker. <laughs> I just and I I just li I like that. Even character. her characters is cool. That's I, I like the way they wrote that character. I like that you know, she was a good balance of tough and serious, you know, at, at her job. But then she had her softer moments. It was yeah. well rounded. But anyway, back to the cage. <laughs> back to the cage. Yeah, sorry. Me and Vito will start talking about Trek women. <laughs> yeah. Like we could do a whole thing about that. And Megan is just gonna be Come like, Come on, boys, stay with me. Stay up. with me. Yeah. Episode by episode. Come on. Well, you know, again, I've talked about it on other um, episodes when we've gotten into stuff like this. And, uh, well, the, the Aliens episode recently. Uh, you know, my all-time favorite old Star Trek episode was Menagerie, which took parts of this episode, The Cage, and mm -hmm. put it into um, a new story so that they could... Use that footage. Use that yeah. footage. And we'll talk more when we get to the menagerie because there's yeah. a lot to talk about that. But I love the cage. I didn't see I mean, most of us. I don't think anybody really saw the cage uh, in fandom until those aforementioned VHS and betas came out in the late 80s and stuff. Yeah, I think 1988, I think. Something. That yeah, out. that sounds about right. I was in high school. Yeah, 1988. Yeah. And. uh for a long time, they didn't even have a complete version of it. They were using like rough work prints and like it was real cobbled. The first time I saw it, it was real cobbled together. It would jump back and forth between black and white and mm. color. And mm. it was kind of a piece of shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually. But enough to get the story. And there were still scenes missing. Uh -huh. Now the one they have is like complete. They did a fantastic job on the remaster of these dude. Even yeah. the the exterior enterprise shots when it's in, I think they might have redone those they actually. Did. They did. Yeah, they look fucking great. Yeah, yeah they yeah. did. They did. I actually watched a video oh, like where, a documentary they, where they showed where they showed uh side by side, side, by side nice. so you could see like the differences and everything. And I mean that being said, I really think that you know, people like to make fun of track and kind of old track and say, Oh, you know, some of the it was so cheesy and corny but man actually some of that shit looked really cool it looked really good it looked it was compared to i've watched a lot of old 60s television you know and comparatively i think that it looked great i mean you know you had what was its competition lost in space lost mm -hmm. in space had its moments but i think lost in space looked cheesy compared to to track yeah. i thought a lot of the effects and what they did with plus it's well known now at this point that trek had like no budget right yeah yeah it's like the that what is it the the meal budgets or whatever for mm -hmm. for catering the ca catering <laughs> yeah yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> yeah they pay more for catering on movies now. nowadays than they paid to make a star wow. trek episode back then although the cage was the most expensive pilot ever made at that time hmm. at like six hundred thousand. yeah that was a lot of money back then there was a lot of effects though i'm sure that they used for that right in yeah. that episode yeah. so oh there was yeah quite a bit i mean think about 
Think about it in the cage because they it jumps around so much. All those fantasy all sequences. Sex. Yeah, that's true. Half an, and then happen to be on the planet, underground, under the planet, uh, on the planet surface, in the various decks of the ship. I mean, yeah. it covered a lot of ground. And uh, yeah, I could see why that was as expensive as it was, you know, especially being a pilot. So there was no money coming in right. or right. anything yet. But um, yeah, I I love the cage. It's become one of my favorite Trek episodes, even though it's not an official episode and i love jeffrey hunter as as captain pike man. i think he's great dude mm-hmm. that yeah that was a standout of the show for me was yeah. pike for sure i really like that yeah. i think it embodies what trek is yeah yeah i know they thought it was too cerebral or whatever it wasn't this the space cowboys but i think that's what trek is i don't think they're space cowboys so much right. no see it i i agree i mean i I, even when I was younger, I always liked the ones that were a little bit deeper like that. Mm-hmm. Same with, I mean, obviously it's brown, the same thing. That's why I always loved Menagerie. I loved the ones that were more suspenseful. The ones where they got real goofy, you know, like Charlie X or oh, Jesus. even other ones like <laughs> Shore Leave and ones where they're like on a planet and they all of a sudden they see the Easter Bunny hopping <laughs> or not the Easter Bunny. It was supposed to be like the, the, Alice, in Wonderland. the Alice in Wonderland rabbit and all these things. And it's and getting real goofy. <laughs> The stuff, even like tribbles and stuff, although that's not a bad story, but that's the kind of Trek. Everybody talks about that, but that's the Trek that I don't care for as much. Yeah. That's not the ones that I re- like to me. It's like these episodes like The Cage, City on the Edge Forever, you know, like um, uh, Balance of Terror, like these ones where it's more about drama and and. It gets a little more science. Human condition. Human condition. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, that's the best. So to me, the cage is like. I understand why they made some of the changes they did, because I get it as much as I like it. I understand that for the time it was probably just too over yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. Too much. But it's too bad that they didn't. It would have been awesome if there could have even at least just been like one season of that Trek. Mm. And then the second season be our, what we know, you know, with Kirk and McCoy and all that kind of stuff. Of course, now, I don't know if you guys know this, but, you know, we have Star Trek Discovery. And in season two of Star Trek Discovery, they've introduced the characters of Captain Christopher Pike and number one and everything. So I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I haven't seen any of those yet. No. I don't want to pay a CBS subscription on top of the other subscription services I pay for now. So. Uh, it's on um, Amazon Prime. Really? Is it part of Amazon Prime? At least season one is. Ooh. I don't know about two. Ooh, oh, shit. Yeah. Yup. Oh, I, I did not know that. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm like, now I'm, and see, so I, none of us have seen any of Discovery yet. And I already, I already know basically what happens because as we have just, you've you know, read all the scripts so far, I'm, right? I'm the, I'm, I am the spoiler. <laughs> I spoil everything for me. I don't. I go into movies and make sure I already know what's going to happen and stuff because I'm too impatient. I'm just way too fucking impatient. I need to know, and I enjoy stories more when I know. But in any case, uh, yeah, they're introduced into into that uh, now, and I'm super eager now to get started on watching discovery i kind of want to hurry up and just get through season one yeah because i've heard eh, season one is eh, yeah. mixed but everybody's been talking about how season two of discovery so far has been great like a lot of up their pe- game a lot of people whose opinions i kind of trust you know what i mean like friends of mine and stuff and they're like dude season two is where it's at i'm like mm. oh okay but um, I know we probably need to wrap it up here pretty soon with uh, in talking about Cage. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say. I mean, like I said, what did you guys? What's your, what's your guys' take generally on on the Cage? I mean, where does this like rank for you in the grand scheme of things? Like, because I know I've always talked about. You've always heard me talk about how much I love this story how much i loved uh these characters how it pike and number one now that you guys watch it again what do you what do you think do i uh, is it seem as crazy because i know when i tell people how that they're like 
what? Like it was one episode and it was the pilot. Like, mm -hmm. and you love it that much. But can you guys see where I'm coming from? Like, yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest, these, the original series, I haven't seen like any of them. So the ones that we're talking about, I have seen like once and that's it for this. Mm -hmm. And so far the cage is number one. The best. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I really wish they had just went with that pilot. I mean, I yeah. get why they didn't for the time frame. It wasn't what the execs thought they were going to get. But it's it's Star Trek. That's me, exactly what I think of when I think of Star Trek. That's what I think of. It seems more refined to me than the exactly. next two episodes. Yeah, they, by far, I think. I right. Think it doesn't feel as rushed, and they put a lot more heart and soul into it. It's yeah, it definitely feels more grounded and not as cheesy. I mean, oh. there's some, still some cheesy parts in it, but. I oh. wasn't like laughing out loud at certain scenes, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, you could, you could yeah. tell because they always said like they were like turning in the the videos and stuff the day it was going to air on TV. Yeah. That's how they got away with some of the <laughs> shit they got away with. But with the cage, it doesn't feel that way. It yeah. doesn't feel like hurry up and get it done, get it done, get it done, and get it out. Yeah, it feels loved. <laughs> and the drama in it. I mean, I I loved Vina. I thought the I the the, the the character of Vina is so. Um. You know, you can just sympathize with her. So, especially that ending, man, where you see what she really looks like. She's all yeah. fucked up because they had to put her back together again. And you're like, holy shit, that's like really sad. And then yeah. they gave what? her back her beauty or whatever. And did you say it's like they look kind? They look human enough. Why didn't they just make them <laughs> look like them? Well, right, right. Well, why? Why? Yeah, but they had why no. Give her they had no guide for putting like one me... huge fucking arm up here for some reason. <laughs> right. Just... They had no guide for putting me back together. Well. Yeah, they did. That's right. Take off your, look, at these, look at these shoulders. <laughs> is that a hunchback? No. The only fucking thing that's different is it's your big ass, head. your big old testicle head. I did like the air bladder effect where they had their veins when they're are pop. Thinking, that was cool. I, that's what I'm saying. The whole thing. I, I, the Telosians. Well, again, go figure. It's like, of course, Larry, you already said it's your favorite. The Telosians are one of my favorite aliens, and I kind of wish they would have revisited them. Yeah. Yeah. Well. They may still, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. I would, I, yeah. I think it's funny you talk about their scrotum heads and stuff like that. And they were all played <laughs> by women. Those look like a scrotum. <laughs> and what? They were all oh, played they were. by women. No shit. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. All the Telosians. It made them look more alien like. Ah. Their small physique. Ah, I see. So it made them, they focused more on their brain power and everything and their abilities and not the strength. Oh, just like the Roswell Grace, huh? Oh, oh. 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 it's all coming together <laughs> now. But yeah, I love, I love that story. And the, <clears throat> you know, again, I know we're kind of rushing through a lot of the stuff with the story. But the only reason I'm sort of doing that with this is because I want to delve so much more into the actual story once we get to the menagerie. menagerie. Yeah, because then. Man, it takes on a whole other thing in a way, you know, <laughs> and and that ending gets twisted. Mm -hmm. But uh, even I just want to say one last thing. Even before Kirk came around and it's a different Enterprise, <laughs> they're still they already right off the bat set their precedent for uh, allowing interfering and allowing a species to die. <laughs> that whole species, yeah. Because they, they basically, by him not agreeing to cooperate and everything and stuff, which I mean, I understand he couldn't, but uh, he basically condemned the Telosians to death. Uh, you know, Vina and nobody had. Nobody else was allowed to go to that planet. Right, yeah. They well, banned everybody. You get the death penalty if you yeah. go to that planet. Like, holy shit. <laughs> right, well, that doesn't come in until. We'll menagerie. talk more about that, all right. We'll find out. No, but I'm just saying <laughs> that. So that that's what I'm saying. It's weird talking about the cage because of how it ties into a future episode. So there's only so much we can really get into. But yeah, I mean, I'll wax even more uh, poetically <laughs> and ecstatically about this once we get to Menagerie because as much as I love the cage, the way they then interwove it into a Kirk and Spock and all that story was just brilliant. Mm -hmm. and And that too, they did that it was purely out of necessity. It wasn't like some great master plan. It was like they we were need something. We, we need, need something <laughs> quick. And so they got to get they wrote this thing and they're like, oh, well, I guess that's good enough. And it's like, good enough, dude, you made my favorite <laughs> Star Trek episode of all time. Like, I think it's brilliant. 
mm-hmm. in the, that they took something that wasn't even meant to be that and they turned it. And then the little twists, the little M. Night twists they put at the end of of the menagerie and everything is my favorite, obviously. But it's so good. I think that's the only saving grace of them not going with this pilot is because they were then able to make use it for the menagerie. Yeah, that's true. And make an incredible episode. That's true. Yeah. So. All right. You shut my ass up. Yep. There you go. That's it. Enough said. So anyway, that was it. Yeah. So the point is, is that uh, they made this incredible that I think most people agree. Incredible pilot. One mm-hmm. of the best pilots ever made for a show and uh, got denied. Shut down. But a little while later, in a rare, rare instance in Hollywood, they actually got greenlit for another pilot. Which had never happened before. No, and uh, that one was a go. Yeah. That, yeah that, thank you, Lucille, Lucille Ball. Right, Lucille Ball. Yeah, Desi Lou Productions. Mm-hmm. Even she went against the better advice of her advisors, who said, "Don't throw in with this. This is going to be a failure." And she said, "No, I like it." <laughs> she just, and that was a lot of it. A lot of people went along with this because they simply it wasn't a matter of this is going to make a ton of money this is going to be a blockbuster major thing they just went oh i really like this i want to see it happen i believe in it let's do it and that was a good way to start trek because i think that's carried through Mm -hmm. you know and that's why it is what it is so you need those people in your corner man Mm -hmm. sometimes Mm -hmm. for sure i don't care if it makes money i just that's cool so let's just do it because it's cool you know that's why we're here yeah. <laughs> yep. Because we don't make any money, no, that's man. for sure. <laughs> we do it because we love it. On that note, if anybody wants to go visit our Patreon page, there will be a link in the description. And if you feel and right like, there as well. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to help us out, man, I mean, anything, a dollar, any whatever, anything helps because, uh, you know, it helps us to do more of our silly uh things uh also if you're watching this and you haven't already seen we also have a concurrent little mini series thing that we do uh that is called starfleet geeks that uh basically tells the story of three officers working at starfleet home base that are having to deal with all the uh antics antics and (laughs) blowback and trouble that kirk and the enterprise keep finding themselves in in for and everything and we're the ones that have to figure out what the hell to do with this and how to deal with them so uh we'll have links to that as well uh so if you want to check that out and uh yeah i think that's that's it that's make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell that's very important very very important yeah but we're going to be doing this uh i hopefully weekly almost if it's not weekly it's going to be pretty close we're going to go through every episode so if you guys have any further things you'd like to uh throw out there about this episode or about upcoming episodes make sure you leave a comment yes please um you know let us let us know uh let us know through social media let us know in iTunes, any, any, wherever you're watching or listening to us, let us know what you think. And, um, we hope to hear from you soon. So on that note, wait, I can't do it. Oh, Uh-oh. there we go. Wait, it's the, I can't ever do it with my hand. You want to do it with the left hand? Fuck. I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Live long and prosper people. It's going to be a long <laughs> series. Maybe by the end I can do it. <laughs> That's going to be the, how, how many episodes is it going to take before Megan can just whip that out? <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you next with the next one will be uh, the man trap. The man trap. The All trap right. of men. <laughs> Trapping the men. <laughs> okay, sucking all that salt out of them. <laughs> All right. We'll see you on that one. See ya. Peace.